Um, so hi, Carol. We'll do just yeah, welcome and go around of introductions real quick. Um, then we'll do agenda review right now. Um, two minutes from our last meeting and the meeting before. Um, and then public comments. Uh, we'll have a self-education learning roundtable, report back from city committees, and then creative discourse work plan update. So just a quick report back of what they've been um what they've what they've done and then uh update on their timeline um and then to dive into their survey and so i can put the their draft survey a link in the chat um and then make an outreach plan for the survey um and then check in on fundraising check in on recruitment and check in on our strategic plan update before closing it out so how does that all sound anything to add or shift around nope. cool um, so hi, yeah, hi, Carol. My name is Shana. I'm the chair of the committee. I'm up on Kent Street. Um, and I, or maybe let's do this with our learning roundtable too, real quick. Um, yeah, if there's any, any inform, any information to share. Um, and I, uh, just got sent this, um, like reparations document that I will put in the chat because I found it really useful. And now I'll pass it to Michael. Um, I'm Michael Sherman. Um, I'm a member of this committee and also a member of the Police Review Committee and also a member of the um, Community Community Fund Committee. Um, and uh, let's see, nothing, nothing unusual or important to report on self-education. I'm, I'm my my self education tries to get away from some of what's going on in the committee in all the committee stuff. So it's entertainment. Um, Pellin, you want to go next? Yeah, morning, everyone. I'm Pin Cohn. I work at Norwich <clears throat> University, and <clears throat> uh, I just uh, discovered maybe you know, uh, but I just discovered like microaggressions uh so i have been reading like some reports on it and i was so surprised and it says you know sometimes people don't know that they are being like racist or discriminated but all the examples very funny i have heard <laughs> a lot so <clears throat> this is another thing i'm just reading now and i'm planning to teach my students too because most of the sentences are so common even if they people have good intention or doing it unconsciously they are discriminated and sometimes racist so this is my one you know self um education thing i'm just reading on my microaggressions i found it very interesting thanks helen uh jeremy You muted, Jeremy. Yeah, good morning. So I'm Jeremy Beaudry, um, committee member, employee of the UVM Health Network. Um, yeah, in between winter and spring, currently, oscillating. Um, and I don't, I don't think I have any um, learning to share this week. That's me. Thanks, Jeremy. And Cameron? Hi, I'm Cameron Niedermeyer. I'm the Assistant City Manager and Staff Support for this committee. Um, I actually, I think it's really interesting that Pellen brought up microaggressions. I, I just took a seminar that the local chat, like the women's chapter of our Vermont uh, Women in Leadership about microaggressions. So there's been a lot of work, um, at least within my sphere of um, women in positions of leadership in government to, to learn about that. And so I think you're right. I think half of the examples we were like, oh yeah, me too. Also, me. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I've heard that too. And how we sort of perpetuate that, right? I also took an excellent class, examining social and clinical equity in your emergency medical services delivery. So um, was a really fascinating class. 
I wish it was something I could share, but it's not. But there are outcomes that will definitely come out of that failure um, that haven't we need to work through them. But it was a really interesting suggestion on how to track, how to begin to track data in your EMS services that would um, help us understand a larger picture of systemic racial issues in healthcare. Um, I don't think a lot of uh, they discussed how um, EMS services have been historically left out of racial equity conversations because, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? And EMS is not normally a squeaky wheel. So not a lot of time or effort has gone into the systemically looking at EMS services um, through an equity lens. So um, a group came and talked to a bunch of city and county managers about that topic. And I think a lot of like really boots on the ground examples of what we could do um, out of that. The first one being, and again, this requires a lot more work and discussion, but a lot of the, like Vermont State has a form that all EMS services have to fill out um, that says like demographic data about your patients, right? But it doesn't include race. Um, and that's just an easy thing to track, right? So um, granted, it's a big state form and so would require some uh, effort on our part to to change that, but it's just part of a conversation we're beginning to have uh, that I'm really excited about. So I rambled about that for a little while. Sorry, it's just, I'm really excited about it. So um, those are my learnings. Thank you. Thanks, Cameron. Lauren? Good morning, everyone. Um, Lauren Hurl, the city council rep on the committee. Um, one thing that came across my desk that I thought I would share, um, I've never done it and I, I need to read about it more, but there's a 21-day um, a racial equity habit building challenge starting Monday that's run by um, Food Solutions of New England. Um, so I'd gotten this from a partner at the Center for Whole Communities who said they've done it and is interesting and it's racial equity in our food systems. Um, so kind of a aspect I haven't spent that much time thinking about. So um, in case anyone's interested, um, you know, whether or not you do the challenge, I think it looks like there's a bunch of resources and blog posts and stuff. So um, just wanted to share that today. Thanks so much, Lauren. And welcome, Carol. Hello. Um, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and kind of why you joined us today. Yeah, I'm the director of the Community Justice Center, um, and I'm very much interested in these topics because, um, you know, social and um, economic justice really impacts the, a lot of the folks that we see. Um, and so what we're doing right now is we, one of our um, other community justice centers developed a study guide for uh, the little book of race and restorative justice. So we're doing a six part series with our volunteers and we've opened it up to um, the some of the volunteers at the Barry Justice Center um, so we're going to, we're going to be examining that, how, how, you know, what we're doing is what we're doing, um, equitable and are we, you know, uh, perpetuating microaggressions as well. And, um, you know, our, is our, our systems and our restorative justice system really sensitive to those issues. So that's what we are working on, um. Yeah, in the Justice Center. So we're we're taking a look at that and all of these resources. I really am gonna. I want to bring all of these resources back to our volunteers, um, the staff and volunteers, to keep exploring this because, like you said, the microaggressions we all do it, and you know we're not even aware that we're that we're doing it. And it's it's super important as white people to make sure that we that we're taking the steps and we're doing the work and we're not putting it on people of color to you know tell us what to do. And so this, sorry, I just didn't, do you have the resource that you are working on? Is that available publicly or? It, it's not, no, it's a study guide that was developed by the Brattleboro Justice Center. And we're just gonna follow along with that. Um, and then we do have copies. I ordered a, a dozen copies of the book. And uh, once, once those are all um, distributed for this, and this is starting on, April 7th is the first night. So it's six, six Wednesdays in a row. Um, so if we have extra copies, I'll make them available to anybody who wants to borrow a copy of it and, and read it. 
And then, you know, if there's enough interest in the community, we could we could do it again. We'll see how it goes and and um, either, you know, off, we could potentially offer it again to community members if that's something that we have in our wheelhouse. So yeah, so you guys are kind of doing it as like a, a like a book club, like study group to like read something together and then work through it together as a organization. Very cool. Yeah. Study guide really is just asking some self-reflective questions of, you know, about each of the chapters. So it's it's really it's kind of a, a starting point for people who've been doing the work a lot already. Um, you know, it might be it might not be that helpful, but because it applies directly to what we're doing with restorative justice, it's it's pretty important. And the, you know, we're talk, talking about the expansion of restorative practices in the schools and you know um, in the community in general. Um, so it's a really good time to take a look at that and make sure that we're doing it right. Great. Any other questions for Carol or? Move us into um, minutes review. So um, Michael has shared two uh, meeting minutes from March 3rd and from March 17th. Um, so I want to take just a minute to just review those again real quick, pull them up. Uh, can I suggest something <clears throat> before going to minutes? Yeah. Can we make it like a Google Doc with this? Uh, resources we can't do a google doc <coughs> i'm looking at cameron i want you to be proud of me for saying no to a google doc um but we can do this by like email i think um just kind of compile okay. resources there. like um you actually Resource can file. Oops, sorry. Oh. you can use google docs to like store documents like that as long as they're just like resources that you guys are like we can add stuff to during these meetings, right? So as long as they're being edited in live like time, if you want to share your links here we, during our your introduction and um, sharing, you could always like, I'll take those links and add it to a Google Doc, right? Um, as long as editing is happening live, you can use um, these things as repositories for documents. That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, because I'm copying and pasting all the yeah. links, you know, like a Word document, but I thought if we, as a committee, if you want to go back and check, right, and if you want to do something about it in the future, it will be good to have some kind of resource file. <clears throat> Any amendments or any moves to adopt the minutes? I uh, move we adopt the minutes. Second. We're in second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, and so, oh, no amendments. Nice work, Michael. Whew. Um, I, get a lot and, of help. I get a lot of help from Cameron. And, <laughs> thank you, Cameron. Um, report back from other city committees. Hand it over to you, Michael. Uh, let's see. The police review committee is going to be having a public meeting on uh, Monday, the 5th at uh, 4.30 to 6.30. Um, there is a Zoom link. Uh, I, I, let's see, I've posted it. Uh, well, various members of the committee have posted it on Front Porch Forum. It's also on the Front Porch Forum calendar, so you can get the Zoom link there. Um, and that, uh, 
that will be probably our only scheduled pub big public meeting. Um, for this, for, we don't know what uh, what happens uh, after June 30th, whether the committee will be uh, asked to continue, but um, we're, we're working towards preparing a report that will come out um, by June 30th. And uh, various other outreach efforts for di to different um, constituencies. Uh, Jack McCullough, who's also on that committee, and I um, are doing one. We, we're surveying um, the merchants and business owners in downtown, and mostly in the downtown business district, but we'll st stretch it a little bit. And it's a very short survey we went back and forth whether to try to do interviews and decided there were too many and it was very hard to do a good sample so we just I've been Jack and I simply walking down around downtown and we decided the one the other restriction is we're not only confining it mostly to the downtown area but we will do some on River Street Memorial Drive but also um, businesses on the first floor basically you know at, at street level rather than just sort of, you know, going everywhere. So we have, um, for starters, we printed up a hundred surveys and we're just walking around, handing them out um, in an envelope with a stamp on it. So um, to encourage people to um, just fill it out, no, no cost to them or just a little bit of time. And it'll be interesting because it was, it was sort of a last minute idea to add the, the merchants, but we thought it was important to know to get their specific viewpoint as merchants on police relationships and what goes right, what goes wrong, uh, where they want to see change. Do you have a sense of the timeline for that report and stuff? Um, well, the deadline, we, we asked people to return the survey by April 10th, and um, then it's just a matter of sitting down and, you know, basically tabulating results. So I, I would say probably not before the end of April, um, and, um, but I'll, I'll get it back, I'll get back to you with anything that, uh, that, that emerges out of this, which is important, or just send, or just circulate the summary. We haven't talked really about how we're going to be um, circulating resources that we've been collecting and we are doing surveys of, the, of other constituencies as well. And I'm not sure what the plan is for how that's going to be distributed. I don't know, Lauren, do you know? Have I no, missed I, I, somewhere? No, I don't know the, the plan. I mean, so everybody, so different folks on the committee so there's a sex worker survey. I'm doing some outreach with, um, and thank you to Carol and her team for some um, people connecting with restorative justice, but um, like I'm working with some um, survivors of domestic and sexual assault. And like, I think there are some folks we're reaching that have not been part of the process through. Um, so, you know, at some point it might be worth just seeing, obviously like the questions are very, um, interactions with the police focused, um, but whatever, whatever themes or, um, you know, issues that are raised, it could be worth, um, you know, reviewing that through this committee's lens as well, just to see um, if there's any, any learnings there. Um, so yeah, the, my for the process, like everyone's gathering all of this information, and we're going to be looking for what kind of stands out as like press issues that have come through that research, um, knowing that we've got a June 30th, at least initial deadline for a report and can't dig into every single police issue. So wanting to just focus on, on some as a starting point and then, you know, have recommendations for next steps. So I think that's the process is my understanding of kind of hone in on some of the things that really jumped out from the community input. Um, and I know that another piece that we're going to be talking about today is the survey. And I know that the um, creative discourse. There have been some conversations about, um, and I saw in there, I think maybe one police question, uh, but that wanting to not do two community surveys like that, but to use the same survey to get a little bit of input on um, the uh, police issues as well. So those are the highlights for that 
committee. Thank you. And I don't seem to have it on my calendar of when the public meeting is. Can you <laughs> provide me so I can just put it on my calendar now? And then, because as you guys all know, I, it's, I've been dropping things on my calendar. So it's yeah. it's this coming coming. Oh, you mean drop it in the chat or? Um, that would be great. Yeah, because it's a public meeting, right? It's not just yes. a committee meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I may have to circulate that to you because I. No, uh, no, right. Yeah, that that'd be amazing though. Thank you. All right. Okay. And any other city committee report back? Um, Lauren, I just emailed you this morning about um an email that I got. Here, let me pull it back up about the home uh, concerns about the home energy labeling ordinance in relation to social and economic um, justice. And so I was one, I have not been, you know, following it very closely, obviously, and was wondering if you could, if I could just put you on the spot and talk, have you talked about it for a few minutes? Sure. So this is an um, ordinance that the city's been drafting up for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially what it does, and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding, like looking at Peter's email, I, I, I really don't understand half the issues he's raising don't seem relevant to what this actually does. Um, so um, I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding of what it does. So essentially you would say if somebody's selling a house, you have to disclose, there's this like online form where you go in and it makes, there's a lot of publicly available data about homes um, like heating sources and other things. And it can, based on the size of a house and some basic parameters, make an estimate of how much energy it costs to run that home. Um, and then you can go in and adjust it yourself based on what you, based on energy bills or other things, or you could just leave it as is if, you, if it's fine or if you don't care. Um, and then you just have to certify that you've done this energy thing. So then that would be information that would be available to buyers. Um, I think there's been a lot of focus on sellers. To me, this like for buyers to know what you're getting into with a potential home or to be able to, to look at homes and have a, have a sense of energy costs. Um, so basically it's just like a, it, it gives an estimate of like what you might spend over the course of a year on energy to heat and operate your home. That's all it does. It's, I think there's some thought that it will like require people to make energy upgrades. It doesn't require anything like that. It does, there's um, other places who have done this and it does seem to inspire people to choose to make those kinds of investments, which is a good thing from a perspective of wanting efficient and um, you know more climate friendly homes in our community, but it doesn't require anything. And there's no data showing that it makes homes less saleable or I mean, the way homes move in Montpelier, I, I think it's a really hard stretch for people to say like pe homes are not gonna move in the city um, based on information. So that's basically all it does is it requires that you provide this information about energy use of the home. And I'm yeah, happy to answer questions. Yeah. I think it's been really confusing for people. <laughs> So I was going to say, I thought this passed like many months ago, so I <laughs> it, following it. It's, it passed a, well, there was a vote on a charter change allowing this kind of ordinance um, a couple of years ago, and then the legislature approved this piece of it. And then, so it's just been working on the language of what this actually looks like, how it will be implemented, um, working to test this tool and all of that. So that's been a lot of work that folks have been doing uh, to like, to make sure that the this information that would be provided is easy to access and, um, you know, as accurate as possible. Cool. But do people have questions or thoughts or? It seems like um, one thought I'm having around, I, I did read some of the front porch forum posts, which did contain a lot of speculative 
concerns, it seems. Um, it seems like the larger issue that's underlying this is with just the affordability of housing in general in Montpelier. And it, it is unaffordable for a lot of folks, especially I think, you know, middle, lower income folks. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, if we had, if we look at our list of things that we wanna be thinking about, is there something around, is there something more around affordable housing that we wanna dig into um, with this focus on economic justice? Um, because it's only gonna get worse. The things I'm reading kind of trends around the real estate market. Um, so it seems like symptomatic, this issue of the, the disclosure seems symptomatic of a larger crisis that people are really feeling nervous about. So. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's worth um, having a conversation. So the city does have a housing task force. Um, I wonder if it, could be worth having a conversation with some folks on that and say, is there a component to it? You know, if, if the committee was this committee was interested, like, is there work or research or any any piece that we could be bringing to that conversation? Um, there, there's definitely work happening. Um, I don't know how much like this, the the kind of issues we work on are are part of it. I think they are, but um, there might be aspects that we could dig into or. Um, focus on. Staff could certainly try to set up some times for that. Because y'all meet at very opposite times of day. So um, I think we'd need to like figure out an, a, a sort of compromise time for that. Cool. So if y'all sort of want to do that and talk to them, um, let me know and staff will make that happen for you. I guess I'm wondering if we should wait until after we have the the creative discourses like report and to kind of see where this falls in in their priorities. Um, you know, so if it is like, oh, we're going to go in and be like, all right, affordable housing is going to be our number one thing that we're going to work on. That's going to be, I think, like a different conversation or like lining us up for a different conversation than if um, it's important. But it's yeah, I'm maybe that's a little too crass and you know, uh, brass taxi, so. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. whenever y'all want to do it. Mm -hmm. Or we can schedule something else. <laughs> yeah. Um. Excuse me, I'm 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 a, a techno dummy, and I just put uh, copied the information about the the meeting the but I don't know how to attach it. I mean, I, I'm, it doesn't seem to be attaching. What do I do after I've copied it? If you've copied it, you can just hit paste in the chat. Um, chat is the little at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Little chat button. Um, no. Or you can email. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to take up any more time. I just, you know, feel like a dinosaur here, but. Uh, it's okay. I can't. I can't find what you're talking about on my screen. But... No. All right. Email I'll get it to you. I'll just, too, Michael. I'll, I'll just email it to you. Email's I'll just awesome. email it. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Thanks for finding Sorry. it. I, I I didn't even try to find it. So thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um. Should we move into creative discourse work plan updates? Um, Cameron, can I call on you? I'm just doing kind of the report back of what they shared with us. Um, well, they walked through the survey, so I don't know if you want to pull that up, but um, they walked through that, shared a couple um, points of feedback from their meetings that they had. Um, there were some interesting immediate actions that we could take. I mean, not immediate as in like, I can finish it right now, but they certainly suggested um, something that came out of the LGBTQIA plus community group was um, safe space training for like members of City Hall. How do you create a welcoming space? Go through that training and be, be a welcoming space. So that is something that I'll bring up to staff and look into a little further. Um, the survey uh, was interesting. Shane and I had some immediate feedback and they've made some changes 
um, that was the majority of our conversation was going through the survey. So um, they're busy women. So a lot of very, very quick rapid fire meetings. Um, uh, so that's, I don't know, Shana, did you have anything else to add to that? It was a rapid yeah. conversation. <laughs> Just like the report back piece is, um, yeah, so they spoke with over 80 people, including um, 26 residents, including nine BIPOC and 14 LGBT plus, um, 12 community leaders, 24 city staff, and 32 first responders. They, I, I think I, I brought up my concern of that they're, they only talked with three folks in like the financially insecure, housing insecure community. And they were not super concerned about that. I think they said they got, they like had a very active folks that were like, um, that like shared a lot of feedback. So they didn't feel like we needed to do another round of that focus group or to like get more, um, you know, data points on that. Um, which I thought was interesting, wanted to share back because I know it was a concern I raised last time. Um, and so where we're kind of at now in the process, right, is that we've, you know, finished up the, um, the focus groups and then the report will go out in late May. And so in between there, we've got this survey design and make an outreach plan. They want to get the like survey um, finalized by Friday and then get it out like for a couple of weeks really intensely and you know we're kind of all hands on deck of like getting the survey out getting a lot of responses and then um, they won't just like take those responses take this take the the notes from their focus group and like send them back to us but instead of like drafting a like interim report and then bringing that back out to the focus group participants for their review like the people who did participate in the focus groups of being like how does this look what does this look like um you know are we missing key points here you know we i think we talked about this a long time ago but of uh, just kind of reminding where we're at um and then bring the report findings to cjack and to the city council for like here's what we see the priorities being um, and so that being done by by late May. Um, so yeah, so does anybody have any questions about the like the focus group um, process or the the process the timeline from here for this stage? Cool. All right, so I dropped the survey into the chat. Um, and we've gotten one like typo change from Lauren by email. Um, but yeah, if there's any other like type typos or bigger questions as well. Um, and then Lauren, I thought there were two. Um, so yes, yeah, you'll, you'll have to like fill it out in order to, to click through. Um, and so, you know, like to, to kind of go next. Um, but what, what was this all of the questions that the police review committee needed here? Or? Was there more? Yeah, just to kind of maybe start the conversation from what did the police review committee need? So I just see the one, what do you need from the police department or what do you wish they would do? What are some actions they could take to improve services? Was, was that from Creative Discourse? Did they write that? This is Yeah, this is all from them. But I thought you guys had worked together with the Police Review Committee to come up with two questions that would be- Well, we this. came up with questions that were not this. Okay. So I don't know if Creative Discourse took that input and came up with this as a way to- Compile it or- um, So, yeah, I'm just wondering about like process for getting input from that group on this piece um, because Monday is our next meeting, but it's just a public hearing. There's no committee discussion and not being able to discuss things. Was, was the timeline for the survey? When's it? I'm trying to get the survey finalized by Friday. So they wanted our responses to it today. Okay. 
Will this be an online only survey? I think that we'll talk about it with outreach in just a minute because that's yeah one of my big concerns or questions too. Right, if we get paper surveys and collect them and then enter them into the online survey, things like that. How are they distrib How are they distributing paper surveys? Do we know that? So that's that. Yeah, well, let's go to talk about outreach. Um, so outreach is it, that's our we're in charge of outreach as the city committee. Um, and so if we wanted to do, you know, paper surveys, I think, which I think we would want to do, I think that's up to us. I can, you know, print, we can like distribute to some of the same places that Pellin and I um, flyered at, you know, so, um, but we would then need to like get them back from folks and then be able to input them into the forms. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some like logistical stuff to, to talk about there. Um, well, Michael had a good idea yeah. with his, the committee that they talked about earlier. Is oh. Stamps on envelopes and handing that out. And it can certainly just come to my office. There's not a problem with that. And you guys have raised quite a bit of money to do this work. So, you know, there's funding available to buy like stamps, envelopes, et cetera. Just an idea. Because the, one of the questions that came up about the um, the, the the public meeting with uh, for the, for the police review was well, what about people who don't have computers or can't get access to them? So, uh, um, Cameron made uh, made it possible first of all for us to have a, a space at the um, city hall, um, but then we also decided well, you know, the, we just may, maybe need to walk these things around and. And people don't like filling out surveys much anyway. Right. Um, and they get frustrated and bored with them. So the idea was to make it as easy as possible. And I think we do have to be careful to, to get at get to people who don't have computers. Because you can't go to the library because the library is shut down. Um, and that's the only place where there are public computers so, that I know of. So where would we want to distribute the paper surveys? Do we want to just like start a list here and? Um... If you wanna, <clears throat> if we uh, wanna distribute them, I think we should uh, use the public offices, not other places. Uh, people who come, <clears throat> like post office, right, or uh, city building instead of, um, you know, putting them in that, you know, home place or with it like other places, right? The bus stop and everything. I think they should be somewhere that everybody <clears throat> go to do their uh, business or something. So then we will be uh, sure that they will come back. I don't know, something like that. <clears throat> I think we should work with the public offices more than other places. <clears throat> Sorry. If I may, the, uh, I, the, the problem with public offices is that they're all shut to the public at this point. City Hall is closed down. The, the library is closed down. Um, you can't use the post office because it's a federal, it's a federal building, not a municipal building. Well, we uh, can certainly put them in a box outside. Like it's not insurmountable. The senior center has a portico that you can walk into. Um, you know, put one on the rec center, rely on partner agencies like Good Samaritan and another way. Mm -hmm. The transit center might be a good one. I mean, there are places that people can go into right now. Um, just got to be creative about putting them places, right? But we, we can facilitate all of those locations. Okay. Good. We've got public offices, another way, post office, Good Samaritan, senior center portico, transit center. And then what also about like meal, like meal distribution spots, like Bethany Church and places too, like 
um, you put signs up there, but we've got a little bit more time here. So we could actually like reach out and make sure we're getting them at the right time. I agree with Michael though. We definitely have to take the post office off that list. I don't, Okay. that's not our building. Yeah, I don't think they would let that happen. Okay, what about virtual distribution as well, besides Front Forge Forum? How else can we get this out there? What are other like lists and things? Yeah. Seems like we could lean on our contacts from the outreach around the focus groups to get those to the groups that we already wanted to talk to. Focus group participants, front porch forum. I feel like I'm just like front porch forum done. That's all that I. <laughs> that's like we'll that's share it on our social media. All yeah, of our departments can share that. No problem. Um. Like Montpelier Alive or businesses things, yeah. Montpelier Alive would probably do it. Yeah. Are there any other listservs we know? Like I know, I bet that Surge would probably share it. The Standing Up for Racial Justice list. Um, are there like business association lists? Are there? Other neighborhood group list is, is, is can a viable network to share this through. Like sustainable Montpelier's list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they've got like neighborhood leads and stuff mm -hmm. who had groups, so that's a great idea. What about like um, I don't know the next time the bridge is coming out? Could we try mm -hmm. to pitch a little blurb in there? With if I don't know if we have an easy enough bitly link or something that people could find it easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. So other next steps are to make the bit.ly link and then have someone, can someone turn the final survey into a paper survey on Friday or over the weekend um, to be able to print that? It's just kind of like, I think like formatting um, so that people can check the box. I can do that. If I get sent the editable version yeah. of it, okay, great. Editable version, and then um, Cameron, can you can you do the printing and and enveloping and uh, stamping and stuff? Is that something? Yeah, that it would or? depend on how many you want to do. I think I would recommend us go for like a drop off box, like a here's how to return it. Like come back to this location and drop it off in this box, right? Um, so that you keep your cost down because that'll be kind of expensive, but I will look into that. What I won't make any purchases before I run it by y'all as a committee. Can we do that by email, you think, then, though? Or mm, How about I just run it by you, Shana? I'll show you what money we have if everyone's okay with that. Well. Um, okay, I get the bit.ly link, paper surveys, drop off stuff. Um, do we want to, does someone want to pitch it to the bridge to, to do some media? Michael? Um, yeah, okay, sure. Um, I'll see what, um, I'll see what I can do with there. Thanks. Anything else for outreach plan for now? I'm sure this will be 
you know, this is the focus for the next month. So um, more ideas will come up. Um, one thought, yep. I, I wonder about like all the shares of all the city committees, like if they all have their own networks, like I'm just thinking we were talking about like affordable housing and like the homelessness task force and some of the different, just sent it out like, hey, send this, you know, it'd be great to get this out to whatever lists they've got. And can I ask, is it okay for me to share this with the chair of the Montpelier Police Review Committee so we can figure out how to get input by Friday somehow? I think that's, that would be great if that's okay. possible. Okay, I just didn't want to share it if it wasn't ready. Um, Cameron, I'm wondering if, can you be in charge of sending it to the city committee chairs to have them distribute? Do you have like, is there a list of that? Uh, there is, yeah. I'll do that. Great. Um, Michael will pitch the bridge. Jeremy will email Serge, I can do Montpelier Live. Does someone wanna, <clears throat> does someone wanna reach out to the, you know, sustainable Montpelier in the cans and stuff? Jeremy, do you wanna do that too? Is that, yeah? Um, and front porch forum posts, can we, you can only post like four times. <laughs> and so um, do different folks want to post on different weeks? Can we like make that plan real quick? Like, um, you know, maybe one person can post two times next week and then we can kind of rotate, rotate from there. Does that make sense? Like Palin, do you want to post um, next week? Does that make sense? Um, and Jeremy, you want to do the week after? Okay. And Michael, the week after that? Um, I may be away, so I'm oh, not sure right. what my what my schedule is right now. So I, I, I can't take that on. Right. Yeah. I can do the week after that. And we'll take it from there. Great. And then for... Um, print and envelope distribution stuff, do we want to, um, maybe we can just like, if anyone is available, we can meet up at City Hall at, you know, 8.45 next Wednesday and do some distribution there or take some to be able to distribute. That's a little bit of a short turnaround, but does that, would folks be interested in doing that? Sure. Yeah, Sorry, I it's not related with your question, but can we use uh, public schools? I I don't know because I'm not American, right? Federal, you know, mm -hmm. state. But I don't mean are all like locked down right now. Do you mean like email or no? The print one that students can take to their parents. I don't know because it's public schools. There's more. Of a, it's just a brainstorming. You know, it's not yeah. just a statement know or they, anything. I know they all have an, like an email newsletter that goes out every week. I could see them maybe putting it in that. I don't know about handing yeah, it Yeah, I'm not student, sure, but, but it's just, you know, just yeah. thinking out, out loud. That I think goes out to every single parent. So that would be. Um, That'd be great. Thank you, Lauren. The, the mention of a newsletter, the senior center has a newsletter that goes out, like, um, I think it's every week, or they get something. So that, that would be one place to just keep people informed about it. Great. Thank you, Michael. Great, I'm sure we'll have more ideas. But I just wanna circle back to the edits and just, yeah, to see if there's any other, you know, structural edits or, um, you know, oh, we're not asking about this or yeah, if there's, and any words about them.
I'm just thinking about like Jeremy's question about housing or, or raising that as a big issue. Like there's there's nothing in here that's like what what are your biggest challenges or like there's nothing that gets that. It. It's all like kind of how people interact with the city and like city services and city meetings and making meetings accessible. Um, I don't know if there's, even if it was like an open-ended question of like, or I mean, I'm assuming that's like the angle that creative discourse, because this is a city committee really honed in on, but I don't know if there's a way to get at like, I had the same question, Lauren, um, kind of asking in some succinct way, just to get a sense of like the top concerns when it comes to equity in the city. Um, I wouldn't know the right question to ask right now, but it might help triangulate with other work that's happening around like really, you know, top of mind issues that people are concerned about. I, I will send these to Create Discourse and yeah, looking forward to um, what the police review committee says too. Great. Um, I guess I'll keep us moving along then to um, fundraising. Just didn't uh, I? I think we, um, you know, have kind of the numbers of you know we've got twenty six. Uh, P. I think it's I did this math before. Uh, yeah, twenty six people to send the fifty dollar checks to. Um, I think that's all like moving, and so I don't know if we have any anything else um, about kind of like numbers update. I think we got like another hundred dollars into the um, uh, PayPal, which I sent to as a check um, to the city and I think got cash. And so, yeah, I didn't know, yeah, if there were any other uh, big checks coming in or if there's any other update on, on money. Nope. Um, I did have a conversation with the person that I that I had mentioned um, who um, said that there would be a uh, that person will send a contribution um, Thanks, and, Rick. and um, that, that person also uh, belongs to a group that um, a, group, a small reading discussion group on um, um, on equity and social justice and I think everyone on that group, according to my contact, is, uh, is has subscribed to the newsletter. So that may be our that may be our way of um, you know really do, do getting a most effective fundraising at this point. I, I don't know. Um, I can't think of any any other way to do this easily except you know going to pe all people we know if we want to do that. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole other level of commitment. Um, and I don't see the newsletter for some reason. It doesn't. I thought I subscribed, but it doesn't come to me. I, I'm, um, so I have. There's just only been like two posts of three or three, oh, maybe. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. if not a. Well, it may be automatically going to junk mail. I don't. I don't. You know. I don't check junk mail regularly. Um, because there's so much of it pouring in that, yeah. um, and you know, sometimes those filtering systems do things you don't want them to do. But, um, but I think that um, that may be our best our our best way of uh, asking people who are already showing some interest in what we're doing to help out. Yep. Cool. And Cameron, did you have an update there too, or? Uh, no, we we got one more $100 check and we deposited it and I don't have an update on the number. I will have that by because it won't have processed through. So it's the same as last time. Um, 
we have an update to you guys next week. Cool. So it'll be a, yeah, plus a hundred dollars minus 26 times 50. Yeah. So <laughs> whatever that yeah. is. Okay. That's what we I'm definitely got about. that. Also those, the, um, the items are in our, um, warrant system. So those should be going, um, back to creative discourse super soon. Cool. Um, Okay, and then for recruitment, I don't think there's any update. We'll just kind of keep chugging along, look and see if there's any update. Um, and then we had uh, on the agenda last time strategic plan update. And sorry, I I inadvertently assigned Jeremy for this, and Jeremy was like, "What are you talking about?" And so I think that was just in my head of what that was. But um, of just wanting to, I think there was a question last meeting or the meeting before about how we should um, update our strategic plan. Um, so I uh, can't attach that, but let me see if I can drop it in the chat here. Sorry, this is taking me a minute. Well, um, I guess while we're doing this, that you know, does anyone have any? Um, I guess I don't really know how to facilitate this because I don't really remember what our goals were. I feel like I'm. I still feel like I'm like. Should we still just be waiting until after we get the report back from Creative Discourses to update our strategic plan? Are there any kind of updates that we want to do before that? Um, is that the concern of like, do we want to um, be updating our like? But the, the the aspects besides their project and policy components. Um, and here we go. I mean, it, to me, it seems like so the city is going to be doing the strategic planning now in the fall this year, um, and that will better sync up with the budget. So to me, it would be like having this in place ideally before that process, so it can be informing that and be a piece of, you know, we've got a, um, I forget the exact wording, but inclusive welcoming something piece of our strategic plan as a city. And so like this being able to um, fit into or inform that would be ideal for timing. Um, and I guess just like process wise for us, like, is there any value to to me, like it makes more sense to me to do it after we get the input from Creative Discourse. Um, the only only reason to think about it before possibly is if we feel like before we have like a bunch of stuff and ideas to dig into, is it helpful to like think big picture of like, okay, what are we gonna, what do we wanna like do with this? Or how are we gonna assess which projects to move forward with? Or like, is, is that conversation valuable um, before we're just like digging right into um, the content that we get? Um, otherwise, I think doing it after we have that to inform it probably is fine. And then just figuring out a focus for the year and how that could feed into the city's strategic plan. Yeah, I think I agree, Lauren. It seems like in terms of kind of content areas to focus on, it's going to depend a lot on the creative discourse research. Um, there are some other kind of tactics here um, that we could start thinking of in advance or acting on. So I'm looking at the public engagement bucket and the cross pollination bucket. Um, so we're, we're definitely doing public engagement with creative discourse, um, but we may want to think about kind of a long-term mechanism that helps us stay engaged with the public kind of as we continue on past just the initial creative discourse work. Um, so there, is there a structure we want to put in place just to make sure we're kind of interacting with the public more regularly or getting feedback from them in some way? And then the second, the cross-pollination, it looks like there's a lot of stuff there left to do um, it's really just about how we interact with other city committees um, 
you know, how we're interacting with city council more regularly. Um, although I think some of us have been attending those um, off and on, city council meetings off and on. Um, this develop a framework around which we can review policies. Um, so I think there's some work there that still feels relevant and we could begin to work on. Um, and then waiting for, you know, what comes back from the creative discourse to kind of prioritize our issues that we want to take. So maybe, like, maybe as a starting point, like, uh, of just like trying this on is that we could, um, you know, get the list of the council, the committee chairs from Cameron, and instead of just emailing them out, you know, have it be like more personalized touch from a member of the committee of, of you know, doing that outreach and saying like, yeah, we'd love to come and like talk to your committee about who we are and what we're working on right now and how that could, you know, work with how we could work with your committee in the future. and. Um, kind of like what Carol's doing in this meeting, <laughs> just being like, here's who we are, here's what we're doing. And, you know, let, let me sit in on this and see if we can support. Um, uh, it seems like a, like a maybe low hanging fruit next step. And uh, I don't, yeah, how do folks feel about that or other, other um, next steps here? Yeah, I think I, I like that. Um, just um, very quickly, I think we would want to be fairly clear about, you know, what we're doing when we go to these committee meetings and what the like offering or the request is. Um, so I think there's there is a little bit of thinking prior to just showing up um, that our presence there is kind of useful and kind of clear, like and not just like, hey, I'm hanging out. Um, so that's the only thought I have on that. Sorry, Carol, go ahead. That's okay. I was just going to tell you all, I put a message in the chat too. I have to go, but thanks for letting me sit in. I'll see you the next time, hopefully. Um, do we want to think about that now? It's like, what are goals? Like, do we want to do that as part of getting the survey out there? Or is this a bigger, like how, how, yeah. Yeah, I feel like if there is an immediate need. We want to make some connections to get the survey out. I, I think that could probably be taken care of through email communication. Yeah. yeah. I think this is more, um, we want to be a service to you other committees. This is how we can be that service. And this is what you should do or how we're going to continue to interact um, in order to facilitate that. Uh, so that that's where I think a little bit of design could happen. I feel like my brain feels like it's like six o'clock in the evening and I'm trying to have this conversation, which is confusing, but I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what to, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, <laughs> like not thinking like creatively or like moving forward on this conversation at all. And so if other people do, like, if you want, if we're ready to like have this conversation now, I would love to have it happen. But I'm just feeling like I'm not being particularly helpful here or I like don't know what questions to ask. <laughs> so, sorry, Jeremy. No, I mean, maybe a question just to get conversation going right now with an eye towards doing this in a more structured way later is, I mean, what do people feel like we can offer to other city committees um, that's within our capacity, within our, our scope, our mission? Um, what do we want to do to support other city committees is the question, I guess. I mean, one thing that comes to mind, so just thinking of like the, the budget worksheet and process like even as a starting point like I wonder if a connecting with various committees and 
I mean, I think there's like variations of that tool that are not just budget focused, but like project design or mm -hmm. um, as they're setting their own priorities. So maybe this would be like over the course of the summer as like all of that's feeding into the city's planning and budget planning for the year, like are, are each of the committees thinking about and equipped to, or if there's things that they're struggling with thinking through that, that we could be supportive of, but like, if nothing else, like it's probably just something like most committees aren't, well, I, I don't know, but like, I would imagine like they aren't necessarily in like a structured way, um, thinking through equity implications of the, you know, conservation commission's priority or like, I'm sure like different ones are at different, in different ways. So if there's some like more uniform way or just making sure everybody's thinking about it and knows that this group exists and has resources and. Um, <clears throat> so Cameron and can City um, uh, set up a meeting for all the committee chairs, then they can share information together Then each chair can go back to their committee and just explain then we can come up with ideas to support each other. Is there anything possible? I have literally never been asked that. And I see there's no reason to not. I mean, we could totally do that 100%. Um, that'd be a fun meeting, actually. Uh, but I, I've literally, in my career, never been asked to do that. I love it. So that's a really cool idea. <laughs> we can I certainly do that. a lot of time. Say it again, Jeremy. It's a really great idea and it saves a lot of time and effort to get folks together. I mean, you wouldn't hit everybody probably, but um, so I, that's really awesome. Um, and I think Lauren, to your point too, it's, you know, part of that meeting is kind of helping folks start to apply the lens of equity through their work. And I, I like what you said, Lauren, about a similar kind of tool or set of principles or whatever. Um, that could help them start to embed the equity perspective and how they're thinking about their issues. Do y'all want to put sort of on your agenda to start talking about like how the, how you would want to facilitate that meeting? So I certainly wouldn't want to put it on the calendar in like a couple of weeks and then be like, now you guys have to do that, you know? So right. um, maybe start having that on your agenda to have conversations about it because we, I mean, we can certainly do that. I think that's like, that's really exciting to me. Yeah. Yeah, let's, that sounds great to do next time. Great. Thank you, guys. Okay, so I think our plan is so next week on the 7th, if we have every, you know, Cameron will email us if, every, if everything's still falling into place. Um, but of, if you can meet up in front of city hall to distribute the paper surveys to around town mm -hmm. and then on the 14th, um, meet back, meet back here on zoom and we'll check in on, um, survey outreach and make a plan for this, um, for, for, for this meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any, any, yeah, anything else? I'm just gonna do this on the calendar right now. <laughs> Exciting. Y'all are such a fun committee. You need to have more fun, Cameron. Yeah. Well, the time for the city hall gathering is eight forty-five. Is that is that what uh, I heard you say? Yeah, okay. let's right because then mm -hmm. or eight thirty. We can do eight thirty too. But right. whatever you say, I just put it in the minutes. So which one do you want? Let's do eight forty-five because then right. when I check my calendar, I'm like, oh, we have a meeting this morning, and then I'll be like, oh shit, we gotta get in the car and go downtown. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I proposed that. Okay. That's so it gives me a boot in the rear end to get the minutes out soon. <laughs> oh yeah, no. <laughs> um
All right. Well, thank you all. I think that's it. Anything else? Yeah. If there's anything else. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, just, thank I know you. a lot of you Wait. folks live in Montpelier. It's supposed to snow. Remember that the alternate side winter parking does not end until 1201 April 2nd. So <laughs> don't, you know, I don't want to get anybody last minute tickets. So make sure you're oh, doing the right we'll thing. About it on who, who, is the op, who is the optimist who said April 2nd? <laughs> I, I, it's just how winter parking's always gone. I swear to God, I can't, I, I, this is so ridiculous that it's like going to snow on the last day of this thing. Yeah. Let's just all pray the snow melts in like a day. So it usually does. It will. It does. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't say, mean though that there won't be another one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> all right, ever the optimist, Michael. Thank you. Yes, right. Well, I have a th I have a, a, a rule of thumb that's that I followed ever since I lived in cold climates that there's always at least three snowfalls from the time spring is supposed to start on the calendar until April un until Easter, whenever Easter is. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, it's a pretty good, I'm doing pretty good on that record, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Have a great